a story about sacrifices made by the writer but told from its lover's perspective. The Triumph by Clarice Lispector. Coming up today are, what is this, our February Patreon? No, January Patreon. What month is it? January. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a triumphant video. <laughs> This, like all of Clarice's stories, the plot is kind of like, where's the plot? Like, I looked at this. There's like almost no plot, right? Like at nine in the morning, it's like the sun enters the room, right? So Louis, Louis is waking up. She hears this sound. And then she's like, oh, yeah, he left. And you're like, who left? Are we getting plot? And she recalls this fight that she had with Georgie, you know, the guy that was seeing her. And he was writing this novel. And he was really upset with her for interrupting by, by coming to talk to him. And uh, he left, so she went about her day cleaning her face, got naked, took a real cold bath, and then said, I'm the stronger one, he's gonna come back, right? Like, like that's, is that the plot? Like, <laughs> I guess that bath was very empowering. <laughs> it's, they say cold showers are important, but I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. All right. So here's my first question. Who, her, the last line of this, right? Like she realizes that she's the stronger of the two or so she claims. Who is the stronger of the two here? What, what, what is strength in this story? I think it's perseverance and I think it's finding one's self-worth. And I totally think that she's stronger. I completely agree with her self-assessment that to let somebody go and then know your own value and be okay with that and finally accept who you are and love yourself, that takes tremendous courage, self-discipline. She is completely the stronger person. And, and stronger here doesn't represent physical strength. I think it represents will or willpower, and she has the stronger will in well, my mind. He could, could you take the devil's advocate role here and make him the stronger one where he sacrificed his career, he was doing everything good to support the family, but realized when he couldn't in that in those conditions, he had to leave. Like, is, is there an argument there at all? Oh, of course, I think there's an argument. I think what you have to bring into the mix, though, of who's going and who's staying is, is it easier to go or is it easier to stay? Uh, where does love finally come into play on this story as well? Because I think that can be something that a lot of people might argue back and forth of, I don't know, maybe who loves who more? Um, do, does that make a difference in when trying to decide if a relationship is healthy and people should stay in it or not? Uh, it, it, it takes courage, I guess, both ways to, to say, I'm done with this and going to leave or I'm, I'm going to stay and, and stick it out. It, it is a tough decision. But for me, I felt like she was the stronger of the two. Well, we certainly have not many positive characteristics or point of view of Georgie here. I mean, he couldn't even write. Right. He's impotent when it comes to writing, <laughs> per se. And Clarice, the, like the author, not the narrator or, or the character or breathing through the character or anything, though she frequently does. She is a writer. Right. So here's here's my flaw. I was curious if you thought this. My first my first instinct when I started reading this, I was like, oh, you know, when she couldn't concentrate while writing, I wonder if this is her writing out her grievances about, you know, her children. Like, because, you know, she wrote all through being a mother. Like, she had to find time to write and have the strength to still come up with these creative tour de forces that she did end up writing. Did you have that thought at all when reading this? I feel like there's a little bit of her own personal life coming through, but it didn't seem definitive for me that this this is you know her writing herself in her story i feel like it was more her just saying that writers are are, are struggling artists and that's mm -hmm. what i am now but I, I i was struggling myself to see what did that mean for georgie in comparison to clarice herself so what's interesting this is her first publication she was 19 yeah, 1940 right she was, yeah, it came out in 1940 in Pond, and she was 19 years old when this came out, meaning she had no children. Her first child wasn't until 1948. So, so what an interesting glimpse into what a writer's life could be for someone that is trying to be a writer and picks a gloomy situation of having to leave their lover 
because of their career, because of what they wanted to accomplish for art. And that's her first piece that she puts out in the world. Yeah, I mean, is she really that clairvoyant, though? I mean, aren't all artists feel like they're struggling and their work is never done and that they, you know, they finish this book and it gets published, but they don't know when their next paycheck's going to be. And are they going to be able to strike mm-hmm. it? You know, you know, the lightning strike again twice with their next series or book or whatever. I I feel like that's kind of a a traditional trope of of writers and artists sometimes. I'm not trying yeah. to like bash them yeah. or anything because I have no talent in regards to that. But I, I don't know if she's that, you know, foreseeing the future. I just like her writing, man. I mean, the opening line, the clock strikes nine, a loud, sonorous peal, followed by gentle chiming, an echo, then silence. The bright stain of sunlight lengthens little by little over the lawn. It goes climbing up the red wall of the house, making the ivy glisten in a thousand dewy lights. It finds an opening, the window, it penetrates, and suddenly takes possession of the room, slipping past the light curtains standing guard. Oh, like, there's something to be said, not only about her writing, but also the way that she takes light. The way that light pervades this room, the way that sound enters this room, And it's in direct juxtaposition to darkness, to silence. And, you know, one of the first things that I kind of, what I like about Clarice's writing is I'm like, okay, light is the opposite of darkness. Without without sound, you have what? Silence, right? So to me, this is, is this part of that man-woman thing, right? Because you know how Clarice always writes about the divide between men and women. Um, Yeah. this This is setting up, I thought, that juxtaposition between two incompatible and magnets, if you will. Yeah, I think that's a fair assumption of the two characters. But isn't it weird that she gives more, I feel like, the positive to the the the, the narrator and more of the negative to Georgie, right? Well, what's weird about that? Why does she write it that way? Why is it why is it pretty clear and obvious this way if we're supposed to think of them as kind of opposites if there's light there's darkness life there's death if there's you know up there's down there seems to be a pretty clear favoritism almost in the story Okay well if one of them has to be strong doesn't one of them have to be weak Oh good point yeah we both can't know, be that... strong we we both can't be equal and happy Una oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the thing is I think Clarice really doubles down on like the light and sound for me at least and the weakness and strength because she what what's the first thing that she does when he leaves? She turns on artificial light into the room and she even calls out how the room, the dining room lay in darkness, quote. And we start to see about how the the character is struggling with light and or not with light with um with silence versus sound, right? Like they're they're competing, they're battling in the same way that the men and the woman, the man and the woman in the story are competing and battling almost like opposite ends as well. And now she brings in the artificial form of light, right? Like this artificial light that she's creating. Yeah, and see, I guess that's my thing for is the if she's the light and he's the darkness and she's getting rid of him through this like artificial means, what 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 does that say about her or their relationship? More, more importantly. Well, to me, did did you think she had an epiphany? Oh, oh, for sure. I think she does have some clarity of this is what I need to be happier, that I am unhappy in this relationship, and this is not fair to me to continue in this relationship. Could you pick out one line to pinpoint that epiphany? Like if, if an epiphany is in a specific paragraph for writers usually, right? Yeah. So for me, mine is, he was everything. He alone existed. He was gone. And things hadn't entirely lost their charm. They had a life of their own. So now we see that even though he's gone, right? So the absence of, what what is he, darkness, right? You'd think you'd have the opposite. And I think she's starting to see that it's not necessarily all black and white that she is able to have her own value. So even if he's gone, she can still be a beautiful creature, right? 
And with a lot of you know early Clarice writing, we see the closer you're connected to nature, to this carnal being without morality even, it's almost like this freedom, liberating experience, right? And that's why in the beginning she has this artificial, you know, when she's turning on the artificial lights, she's putting on soap and artificially cleaning herself. It's only when she like strips and blasts herself with cold water, like really embracing that naturalistic, you know, moment that she breaks free and, and finally has her moment of freedom, her epiphany to realize that she doesn't need someone else. Light can exist without darkness. And in a sense, maybe she can exist without necessarily having a man extinguish her own internal flame or light, if you will. Real quick, I'll get to my quote that I think I had my epiphany, but I do like the use of water here in the story of that's kind of her cleansing. And we see that in many, many stories with the baptism of water, that cleansing with water. And I, I think that, sure. you know, encapsulate perfectly. But for me, it was sure. the last line of the story, which said a warm ray of sunshine enveloped her. She laughed. He'd be back because she was the stronger one. And mm -hmm. I think it really was literally that last line that kind of made me say, ah, okay, the ray of sunshine enveloping her that, that she's coated in this armor that she's the more powerful one. Yeah, even even with the absence of him, she is still has value, right? She's not worthless the way that he told her she was. Maybe she even started to believe at some point in times. So I think, I think it was a fun turn of the, the phrase there. And I think it brought back in, if you remember, we opened up with the sun, you know, permeating this room and, and enveloping it in its light. And here you see her going through a similar experience, right? She's wrapped in her own warmth and self-worth, which I think is a good lesson for anyone out there, right? That, that maybe sometimes we do get wrapped up and emotionally invested in others. And, and, and there's nothing that says that it won't hurt if that's ripped away. But just because that's ripped away, that doesn't mean that you still don't have beautiful light or value inside yourself. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think that Clarice, of course, is a master of making you have the feels and using this light and sound. Those are those are things we all kind of can relate to. And so that's going to make you feel because you understand what it is maybe for the sunshine to, to be on your face or you understand what it is to, you know, be silent or hear lots of noises. Being able to relate to those things is going to, uh, you know, empower you through this story. A, a beautiful short story, too. Only three pages and so much is yeah. encapsulated in this. Absolutely loved it. Yeah, so Clarice, an amazing writer, of which you can check our playlist down below to check out more talks and discussions from us on her because we absolutely love her. She's one of our favorite writers of all time. Guys, we appreciate you spending some time. Remember, you are valuable and spend some time thinking about your worth out there. I think it's worth it. I'm Una, and I appreciate you spending some time with us here today. We post videos every Monday and Thursday. Una out. Peace.